now I would like to introduce our next speaker, which is um, Cedric Berger. Cedric Berger is a global manager for information modeling and data governance at Novartis. And he will give us an insight into the Data42 program. And I could have a short look on the slides and I'm very excited to see um, how he will walk us through the graph-based approach that they choose in Novartis. Okay, Cedric, the floor is yours. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Uh, just stop me when the time is over because we are already over the, the schedule. So I'm gonna give you a brief uh, demo of uh, what we have done over the two last years in a program, so-called Data42 at Novartis. And uh, I'm gonna focus on the interoperability as defined not by FAIR or by SPHN uh, agenda. So I'm gonna mostly cover semantic interoperability, a little bit of data quality and almost nothing on exchangeability, just at the conclusion. So the, the trigger of the Data42 program was that uh, it was really difficult to uh, basically run analytics on decision or decision making on aggregated data. So we have years of uncatalogued, unconnected and fragmented data across the organization, which covers uh, mostly uh, preclinical data, so on animal models, clinical data, omics data, image data. So Data42 was created to provide a, a unified and interoperable uh, data set. And because we have started with the semantic uh, enterprise model four years ago, they, they asked us to apply that to the Data42 project. This is just about data secondary use, meaning that we don't use this model now for a primary purpose, which is to uh, collect data for uh, health authority submission and, and uh, hopefully approval. So the Data42 is just about three main objectives, which is giving a holistic uh, research and development connected data uh, for analytical purposes. This is uh, also for to make decision, data, data fact-based decision on the portfolio management, and also have a, a frictionless access point where uh, internal data and external data integrate together. So all of, all of that is about uh, link and clean data uh cleaning data being in our case uh, a kind of a byproduct uh, uh, or an advantage that we get once the data is linked so the scope is uh, about uh, roughly a bit less than 3000 clinical studies completed csr submitted database lock on these clinical studies we have a total amount of uh, 2 million and 400,000 variables so here zero is missing sorry we have uh, 153,000 unique distinct variables and we have a target model that is uh, around uh, 4,000 variables that integrates three different data standards the legacy novartis the uh, clinical data standard which is called novdd the current one, which is called NCDS, Novartis uh, Clinical Data Standard, and uh, the one from GSK, because three years ago, Novartis acquired the Oncology GSK portfolio. So when I say link data, it's about linking the structure, the schema, but also the content, the values. So I make this distinction here because uh, I'm sure the audience is data friendly, but it's, it's, it's worth mentioning that we can do some uh, matching uh, unification of the structure, the scheme, the schema, and uh, the content, the value. So here I have a very simple example. And I used, we use matching at Novartis for uh, qualifying fuzzy equivalence. Uh, so this is typically uh, something where we use the simple knowledge organization systems costs where they have a few relationship uh, we, uh, about fuzzy matching. So here we match two uh, data object, project and initiative, and we match two values here, Switzerland and Swiss countries. The same way we do mapping, and I differentiate that from mapping, from matching, sorry, because mapping is kind of everything that is not equivalent. So this is uh, using many other uh, different relationships that are coming either from standard ontologies or the Novartis upper ontologies, the NVUO, as we have defined it uh, over the last uh, four years. So enough with slides, I'll jump into uh, uh, real data. So I'll show you 
Can you see my screen? Yes, I guess so. So what you see here is the Novartis knowledge graph. Huh? So this is nothing, no vendor solution, no lock-in situation with any product provided by any vendor. It's, everything is RDF based, triples. And uh, what you see here is the content of the knowledge graph that is just uh, conformed to some style sheets to be uh, browsable in, in, a, in a web browser. So we have different uh, menus there uh, that are uh, featuring uh, the different domains of the of the of the company, and I'm gonna directly jump to the unified clinic clinical model. So everything on the graph is as a URI. As you can see here, we start with the node internal data standards. So this guy here that is linked to data, Novartis data, generic data, external data standard, where you have all the standards you talked about already. And I'm gonna dive into the Novartis internal data standards, where I have those three uh, different standards, so the GSK legacy, the current Novartis and, and CDS, and the NovDD. So all these, uh, these nodes are browsable, either as a graph or as a web page, because they all have a URI that will re resolve in a URL, auto-describing themselves, uh, when you click further. So when you click right on this guy, for example, you can navigate the graph further. So I've pre-selected here the, the view and the relationships so that it's in simple and according to the presentation. So basically for each standard, you can drill down using several relationship according to the legion here. Uh, all the relationship have the same color here, but it's not the point. Uh, when you mouse over them, you can see what they, what they are for a simplicity reason and for as it was said, not everyone is familiar with semantics, so those graphs can be really overwhelming for, uh, uh, for naive people, let's say. So we have simplified the view here. So you have the data standard level, then you jump down into the domain level here for uh, NCDS, which is based on CDISC SDTM. You have this observation class in between. You have other classes, but we basically end up with three domains that are uh, adverse event here in which we have variables. So here we have an intermediate conceptual variables that is about the adverse event A term, as I was explaining in the slides. Uh, just give me a second, yes. So this I explained, then I jump to the uh, variable level and those variables, uh, they can uh, be um, linked by different relationships. So here we, uh, I heard Christian saying that uh, the process cannot be described by RDF. Uh, we, we have a BPM model uh, to, to basically describe processes using RDF-based ontologies. So here we have a chronological process that said that this task is coming before this one and processed by this role and into this process and we have a hierarchy of tasks. And so in our case, it works quite well. And uh, this is one type of relationship with which you can link basically that this uh, fully qualified variable that is, let me jump back to the graph and zoom in. This fully qualified variable that is prefixed by, by RP because they are raw data can come uh, are coming before the uh, data review uh, DR uh, data stage that is coming before the SD that is the SDTM data format. So these variables are uh, chronology organized uh, by ha having some timely based uh, relationship. But you can have other relationship, of course, and this is what we'll see. In the next slide, I can browse through the graph to show you exactly the same if we have some time after. So we have also technical transformation. So meaning that uh, from one variable, you can uh, indicate what is the transformation that is applied to jump to the other variable. So here we have NCDS copy element, uh, that is quite simple because you just copy the value, but we have also a more uh, complex relationship that are also have a URI net that also auto describe themselves. I can show you that later on. So please note that we are still in the Novartis clinical data standard domain and not uh, yet across the, the, the other standards. So the same apply when you jump uh, from one standard to another, you have technical transformation that says that this GSK 
A adverse event A term variable can be linked via the central uh, NCDS uh, variable via another transformation, and the same applies with the legacy uh, NovDD uh, data standard. So I think by now you got the point, and I'll show you another model. So this, of course, can be linked, for example, to external uh, variable. Uh, we, we have the CDISC model the, that includes uh, the different CDISC standard, the bridge model. If we expand the bridge model, you see that it has also an adverse event subdomain. So you can add it to the graph. The adverse event subdomain, they decompose into many things. The, the usual attributes or properties of the adverse event that you can link to the same in the different Novartis uh, models. I'm going to show you the example of um, specific, yes, so this is the model on in the graph. So we have all the domains and variables, uh, the target model. We have the target domains as a uh, table, variables. We have all the code lists associated. And uh, everything that you can see, that you see here can be, can, is browsable. Uh, so. Every time you have this uh, link that we have here, you can browse anything as a graph or as a, as a table. For example, this variable will auto describe itself. It's quite complex, but you have many relationship uh, related to the description of the variable, the related concept, the related to the derivation and some about data governance as well. Who has done that, when, where, how, everything is recorded here. So if I jump in the last example about the, the sex variable, you have here the same uh, the same uh, nodes that I showed before. So the three data standards, and we see how they link together to this uh, fully qualified DRDM sex variable. And in that case, we have the example that it links also to a reference list. That is this one with the different values. So this is where we link basically all the structure of the different standards to the content of one reference list that can be linked and harmonized with whatever external model standards that we have, like Loink, uh, OMOP, uh, you name it. Okay, not sure about the time, but I'm gonna have two more slides and conclude. So what's the value of that? Uh, the value is clearly to basically have machine and, and human readable, uh, basically outcome of uh, queries that you can either uh, pre-calculate or dyna dynamically uh, send to the graph to retrieve basically uh, linked data information. Uh, because everything is linked to everything. Right now we are able to, for example, to get all adverse event preferred term, MEDRA compliant for all female patient in the sponsored randomized clinical studies because each of these things is an object on our graph. Uh, the CSR completed is a, is a tag as well. You can filter by the date, of course. Having a biomarker positive breast, uh, breast cancer, HER2 positive population, and link that with the OMOP, for example, the IBN market scan real world database. So for the moment, the, the 2,800 studies have not been yet mapped to, the, to this central model because we go by the need, otherwise the task is huge. And right now we have uh, basically around 50 studies that are linked to the target model and several data sets in real world data. And uh, but the good thing is that because this is an enterprise data set and, and everything uh, is, is linked together with the Novartis upper ontology, which is the glue basically between all the existing standards, internal, external, you can really link that, for example, with our IDMP compliant uh, model uh, to know the dosage, the route of administration, uh, link that to our operational uh, data hub uh, by asking questions that where this uh, study was conducted and having link to the development program, the money and the people and uh, everything that, that makes enterprise architecture basically for what it exists, of course, because again, we go on a, on a use case basis. To conclude, I think this semantic interoperability is the enabler for everything else. Uh, uh, it's uh, mandatory to link integrate uh, data in, with, regard, with regard to its structure and its, its content. Uh, it's a gigantic task, so we address it uh, by uh, by use case and by priorities. It's uh, it's some fundamental work that only data experts uh, do, and usually uh, behind the scenes. 
So uh, it's, it's difficult to have first uh, uh, top management uh, acknowledgement that this needs to happen and then long-term support. And second, you usually are far from the spotlights and from the nice shiny apps that many vendors are providing and that usually attracts most of the attention. Uh, when you link data, you, you, you clean data because when data is linked, you can uh, easily identify duplicates, mismatches, and so on. So this uh, the data quality is coming uh, as, a, as, a, as a byproduct, especially now that we are starting to apply uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence on our graph to improve the graph. So it starts, it starts to, to be really promising. And uh, regarding exchanges, exchangeability, uh, of course, the, it's a W3C, W3C standard, so we, we don't have any uh, lock-in issue with any, any, any vendor solution. And uh, uh, governance is tightly attached to, to modeling in our case because you cannot uh, apply any data governance if you don't give data an architecture. So we, we give data and architecture. We don't reinvent the wheel because we let the knowledge where it is most of the time and we just create the glue that is linking everything uh, together. So those exchangeability uh, issues are mostly addressed by governance where our knowledge graph, for example, include our uh, information uh, risk management policies about license, privacy, confidentiality, GXP constraints, and so on. And uh, the, most of the time we, we try to embed this governance into the process and not issue guidelines anymore. And it links to this very, very uh, interesting topic about transparency that is the way to trust the data. Because uh, as, as we have seen recently with the, the COVID paper on the Lancet and the Journal Clinic of Investigation, if you don't make your data transparent, your process transparent, whether it's the data analysis process or review process, then uh, people don't trust the data. But this is a big topic. So. But I think the semantic interoperability will, will enable that. Am I on time? Thank you for your attention. <laughs>